Hello, display community. This is John Battleghazi. I'm an artist. I do freelance illustration, and I have my own online course on how to draw. And since many of us are stuck at home at the moment, I want to take the time to show uh, how I do digital illustrations using the application Procreate. So I originally used to do a lot of pencil portraits, and my style is more of a photorealistic style. This might come as a surprise, but I actually don't use the Apple Pencil for my work on my iPad. One of the things that you can do with this app is you can export your videos. I will show you the exported video of an illustration I did that was based on a very famous girl with a pearl earring painting. So let's get started. For this tutorial, the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you how to start uh, a new canvas from scratch. So I'm in my gallery section of the Procreate app and I'll go to the top right corner there's a plus and I can add a new canvas. I tend to work with the paper size because the trade-off between the number of layers you get and the resolution of the the image works for me. I think maybe it's about 35 layers maybe a little bit more. So I'll start that and you can rotate the canvas. I don't have an Apple Pencil because I find that it slows down my workflow. In terms of uh, drawing in real life, I love using pencils. And my original approach to using a tablet, I also really wanted to have a stylus. I wanted to have an Apple Pencil. When I actually got one, I found that it didn't really match my style of uh, working digitally. So everything I do is with my two fingers. There's no pencil necessary. And I'll show you the tools that I use. I only use two tools for any of my Procreate illustrations. I use the Studio Pen for inking, and I'll demonstrate that here. One of the downsides of not having an Apple Pencil is that you can't vary the line width. So if I do need to do some kind of freelance work that requires um, a style with uh, a different kind of line widths, you know, thicker and thinner, more like real life illustration, then I need to mess around with an eraser, uh, which is very time consuming, but, you know, not so bad. So with two fingers, if I just touch two fingers to the screen, I can erase. And then if I touch the screen with three fingers, I can redo what I just erased. The other tool that I use is the Bonobo chalk and I use this one for my shading. In the spray paint set I used to use the splatter tool but I'm pretty sure these tools were all changed in the latest update. If I make it as large as possible, if you look at the left of the screen I can make the brush size up to max then you can see it's a very fine kind of spray and then if I reduce it it becomes more dense until it's just a line. So I tend to use it somewhere in the middle, maybe a little bit a little bit above the middle. And I tend to work with the edges because I like the subtlety. When you're erasing, I usually erase with the airbrush, the hard airbrush, because it's just very no-nonsense and can just erase. But if I want to be more subtle, you can actually change the eraser to, to any of the brushes. So it can act similarly to a brush. It has the same characteristics. So if I turn the eraser into the bonobo chalk, then I can erase the marks that I made. It's very useful for making your work look more subtle. Another thing that I tend to use, if you go into the tool here, the canvas, the drawing guide, if you turn that on, then you get a grid. And this grid is very useful for lining up your illustrations so that they're in the center of the page. You can edit this drawing guide, the grid size. You can make it larger or smaller, which is very convenient. And then, of course, you can change the thickness. Um, but I'm not really using those for the illustrations I'm doing, so I'm not going to go into that so much. Other things that I like to use, opacity. So sometimes my shadows or my highlights are a little bit too strong. And if I can reduce the opacity, then I can make them more subtle and they can fit the illustration better. 
Another thing I tend to use a lot is this transform tool. So I work a lot with lines and circles and I often need to adjust where they are to line them up. So I find that I use this almost as much as I use the brush tool. Okay, so these are the tools that I tend to use and what I'll do now is I'll show you the latest thing that I'm working on. Okay, so what you can see here is something that I'm working on right now. Without using an Apple Pencil, you can really move around very quickly and work at a really fast pace. So I'm using the transform tool to move some lines around and adjust their positioning. And the, the whole time that I'm doing that, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, and trying to just speed up the process that I work uh, so I can rotate and I can duplicate I can switch between layers and I don't have to mess around with a pencil everything is just so fluid and fast and I could zoom in and zoom out and that's exactly what I'm doing this is all real time I'm switching between the eraser and the brush to tidy up as I go along and sometimes I'll merge two different layers. I tend to use a new layer for every line that I create. And then when I'm satisfied with that, then quite often I'll merge it down so there's not, there are not too many layers because I think there's a maximum of about 35, between 35 and 40 layers with this size canvas. Usually I'll duplicate lines, but with this, I rather than duplicating, I was just creating new lines and trying to line them up. I wasn't using the uh, drawing grid, although quite often, if I am trying to create straight lines, I will do that. So what you can see underneath this actual illustration is an outline. I tend to work from the original image, whatever I'm inspired by, I'll have some kind of image, and then I'll reimagine that into abstract kind of shapes and I'll get down my initial design and then I'll tidy that up and change it a little bit and then I'll get down a second design sometimes and then the process just continues and continues you know I might I might do that two or three times until I'm happy and then what I do when I'm finished that design is I'll reduce the opacity and then go over it again until I'm satisfied you can see that I tend to use lots of circles and straight lines and I match them up with the transform tool. I use the eraser and that's it. When it comes to filling it in, then I use the bonobo chalk. So the Vermeer painting, the girl with the pearl earring, I got the initial reference image and I reimagined the image and in this case I used a lot of circles. I changed the size of the head, messed around with uh, different background. I didn't want to have a, a just a normal square background. I wanted to, to change that a bit. Then I got down the face and it's just a lot of different experimentation. If something feels right, then I'll keep it. If it, if it doesn't, then I'll tweak it. Sometimes it looks like it's okay. And then, you know, after a while, eventually I'll not be happy with it and I'll do something else or I'll get rid of it. Sometimes I'm caught in between two minds and I'm not sure, but eventually, you know, if you spend enough time on the piece, then you'll, you'll figure out, you know, whether you want something or not. Okay, so now I'm getting to the point where I'm coloring it in and I'm sticking to the original color scheme, which is very beautiful. And... I'm getting a background. So at this point, I don't know what kind of background I want to work with. And I'm even not entirely sure whether I'm happy with the final design. So I'm still thinking of ways to manipulate lines and create different patterns that would work with this style. And eventually I find one that I'm happy with. And that moves me on to the next stage, which is the shading stage. So originally, I'm a shader. When it comes to my pencil drawings and my, my fine art, it's really all about shading and realism. I really love this uh, texture. Another thing I love is getting highlights and shadows. So I get a real thrill by getting down shadows and 
creating the illusion of light and dark. And here I'm still experimenting with the shape of the composition. And then I'm getting in some shadows. You could reduce opacity to make it a little bit more subtle, but maybe I felt like the contrast with the dark shadow on the back meshed well with the, the light shadow on the front and on the collar. Working on the face here. Sometimes it's nice to have some smooth shading and then some sharp lines. With light, I like to have a lot of sharp lines. It's very uh, vivid and dramatic. So again, going back and referencing the original image, just so I can get the look. I guess I'm looking at the way that in the original image, the light shining on her headwear. I'm looking at how the light reflects off of that. And then at the last minute, I added a circle and I felt like the circle creates a nice little bit of balance with the uh, with the earring and then the final piece which is very important is to add the name okay and that's it that's the finished piece all of that was done in procreate i used just two brushes i used an ink brush and i used one brush for shading and that's it that's it it's very simple and i don't have an apple pencil so i just use my fingers because i think it's much quicker. That's the end of my tutorial, and I hope that everybody stays safe and everyone can make the most of the opportunity to do a lot of the things that they normally wouldn't have time to do. So take care.